please. Yes, please. Speak here. Khatta? Hot water or, or kahwa, that's all. Another written question. <coughs> and a short introduction. It is with extreme pleasure that I am again in your presence. The first time was in Chino, California. And the question is, I am wondering why there are not more women visible in the endeavor to attract more people to Ahmadiyya Muslim, to Ahmadiyya. More women? This may be the number one criticism in the United States. I, I just couldn't follow that. Would the, you kindly repeat it? Please? Again, it says, I am wondering why yes. there are not more women visible in the endeavor to attract more people to Ahmadiyya. Well, if more women will be visible, more people will be attracted to women, not to Islam or Ahmadiyya. <laughs> That is my general finding with my experience of life. I think this is true. It's not just a joke. Yes, please. You want to ask a question? I just want to clarify that. Yes. Uh, would, you, would you kindly go to the microphone? If you take the trouble of going to the microphone, please. Uh, during the recent uh, war in Iraq, um, in the United States, most of the um, reports from Saudi Arabia, um, Kuwait, um, emphasize the fact that um, Muslim women were um, sort of kept um, in the background, so to speak. Um, American women who were in the armed forces were asked not to drive vehicles because that was forbidden in Saudi Arabia. Um, the way the news was presented, uh, it had almost uh, an adverse yeah. effect on right. at least the, the females in the United States. Yes, I understand this. Please now, I'll answer this question. That was also a part of the propaganda, an organized propaganda carried out against Islam. The fact is that Saudian attitude to Islam is a very, very bigoted and narrow-minded attitude. To understand Islam from Saudi behavior is not right. It's not wise, I should say. Because even if you try to understand Islam from the reflective mirrors of people's conduct, you should have a broader view in before you and have an opportunity of comparing one conduct against the other because all conducts of the Muslims are uh, understood to be reflecting their understanding of Islam. That is wh wh what I'm saying is understood to be. But that again is not right. Many parts of the Muslim behavior, many areas of Muslim behavior are not related to Islam at all. They are either related to the local customs, or related to the Western culture. So Islam is neither here nor there. So that is why I warned you in the beginning that if you want to genuinely to understand the message of Islam, read it from the sources, that is the Quran and the traditions of the Holy Founder of Islam, yourself, not through the veils of Muslim medieval scholars. Because that is that would be a very dangerous game because according to my study, the medieval Muslim scholars were themselves influenced by the political situations of their time. So they should not be accepted without a pinch of salt. They should be, instead of going reaching Islam through them, why not study the same sources which they studied and make your own conclusions? So I always find it a safer attitude, not only to d directly read the Quran and interpret it according to my own understanding and wisdom, whatever God has given me, but also to study the early history of Islam during the period of the fully founder of Islam. 
if there women are treated like they are treated in Saudi Arabia today, then Saudi behavior would be Islamic. If women had a completely different role to play in his period, then of course Saudi behavior would not be Islamic. So as I understand, in those days women even took part in war, not only in tending after the injured and the dying, but also they took up weapons. They are Muslim women who are known to be great warriors, who actually participated in the wars, like Hala, for instance. She has become a legendary figure. And like, do, at one stage, I, I can quote just one instance of history, some Muslim, uh, I don't say well the entire Muslim army or a part thereof, put to, was put to flight because of a sudden rush of the enemy, which was so powerful that they were actually put to flight. Ladies were behind in the camps, ready for uh, tending the wounded and so on and so forth. They took up the kajal in their hands and addressing these men, they said, look here, you, your situation, they didn't say the same thing, but uh, to the, to, 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 in effect they said, your situation is between the devil and the deep blue sea. Either you fight the enemy or you fight us. Or, and having done with you, then we will go ahead and fight the enemy. This was the Muslim spirit displayed in women's character at that time. So instead of reading or trying to read Islamic uh, way of life regarding, uh, uh, regarding ladies, regard, regarding women, through some Muslim countries' behavior like Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, Indonesia, etc., we should go direct to the sources. And here again, you will find yourself in such confusion. In Indonesia, the understanding of Islamic behavior is absolutely different from that of Pakistan and that of Saudi Arabia. In Syria, it is different. In uh, Lebanon, it is different. So, which would be Islam? So, this is my, uh, my request to you. If you are really interested, you should always try to understand a faith from the sources, not from the propaganda carried out today. I'm not sure whether this is more a question or rather an observation. I've been studying uh, Islam and the Ahmadi movement with Mr. Tia Selby for some time now, and the gen general um, tone of questions so far have been about the public image and the attitude towards that image. It seems to me that this would, is a first-class opportunity while you're in London, because clearly you're not short of technology for some public relations campaign to be instigated by the movement to perhaps tidy up one or two of these uh, misunderstandings and perhaps present the face of Islam that you would like to uh, put forward rather than allow us just to watch many of the television programs and coverages from different parts of the world which may misguide us and tempt uh, um, potential converts in another direction. Uh, can I have some views on that? Please? I think you should, if you specify your question, because your question uh, applies to a very wide situation. It does indeed. And uh, if I start answering this question in generality, I may take more than an hour or so. Okay. You better please specify one small area. We start, make our beginning from there. Okay. Um, yes. In that case, the question really is, does, does the movement have a PR man? Um, would it be useful to have um, perhaps some professional people, either from inside the movement or from without, or invited in, to perhaps look at the image that you are um, transmitting to the world and perhaps they might give some guidance as to how best to counteract the adverse um, publicity that we get from elsewhere in the world? Yes, sir, please, thank you. Do you mean uh, the possibility of employing professional aid to uh, put our image across the world according to the modern means of uh, image projection? 